Good morning. During the declared emergency in the City of Toronto, Committee of Adjustment virtual public hearings are being conducted by electronic means through WebEx, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. These measures are necessary to comply with physical distancing requirements and a provincial order that limits attendance at public gatherings. This will be a virtual public hearing and participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx, an online event that is being moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may do so, do so by watching on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting either by their computer, a phone or tablet app, or by telephone. All participants will automatically be muted on entry, and when your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator, one person at a time. Only the committee members will be participating by video. Any registered participants will be participating by audio only. We ask that you also mute your device until you are called on to speak. Land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, Haudenosaunee, the Nwendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with sections 45 and 50 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is now called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaw that apply to the property, permissions to, uh, to extend or alter lawfully non-conforming uses, and consents to sever properties to create new lots. Anyone who wants to receive a copy of the decision of the committee on an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name address and email address because Committee of Adjustment and the T-Lab will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you don't agree with the decision of the committee, decisions may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body or T-Lab or in some limited circumstances to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal, LPAT. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. The hearing procedure will be as follows. I'll call each item in the order listed on the agenda. And um, we go in order in the virtual world, unlike uh, when we have hearings where we vet the agenda. Uh, here we just go starting at number one and plowing through the agenda in order. So when you make your submissions, when an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant will proceed with the presentation if required. The committee may ask questions or take the matter into the committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. And Mr. Palmer, who's going to be watching the clock, will comment when you're reaching the five minute uh, point. Um, when addressing the committee, please start off by clearly stating your name and address for the record. And please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. We deal with planning issues. We don't deal with building issues or uh, foundations or issues or personal issues between neighbors. The applicant or agent proceeds first. We'll make a presentation to the committee uh, if required. Uh, there are people in opposition. Generally, there is a presentation. And please note that the committee will not entertain revisions to proposals. At the hearing today, the committee may decide to defer the application if it's being substantially revised in order to ensure that the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice of the application are informed of the changes. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application will be invited to speak. P committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they finish to speak their presentations. And when all uh, other speakers other than the applicant agent are finished, the applicant or agent will be given an opportunity to rebut those issues and answer those questions that were raised by the other speakers, not to uh, introduce new information, but merely to respond. When there's a lot of uh, neighbors that he has to respond to, I uh, will again use my discretion and perhaps give the uh, agent more than five minutes if required to answer all the issues raised by various neighbors. And that will then mark the end of the discussion on an application. The application is then taken into committee for a decision. Uh, members uh, participating today, on my left is uh, Mr. Taylor, on my right Mr. Palmer, and um, virtu appearing virtually is Mishi McCluskey. 
and I am Michael Clark, I'm your chair. Uh, some business matters to take care of. We have to confirm the minutes of the last meeting, which was last week, I believe, July 22nd. Actually, we only have the July 14th. The July 22nd aren't ready yet. Okay. The July 14th, have we already approved those? No, okay, we didn't so do them last week. get a motion to approve the July 14th minutes, please. I'll move for approval. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. That wasn't here. It was Ms. Sheehan. There you go. Uh, okay, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, Ms. Sheehan, second that. All in favor? Okay, the minutes are approved. Uh, are there any um, declarations of interest on this morning's uh, agenda by either panel or staff? I have a conflict, Mr. Chair, for item number 8, 38 Uno Drive. I live within the notification area. Okay. So I guess uh, Mr. Carvalino, who's also staff participating virtually, will take over your uh, function on that application. That's correct. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Okay. Um, what else do we have to deal with? Oh, deferral requests, madam. Are we going to deal with those in order or should we deal with those at the top so we can clear those people from the line uh, who are no longer going to have to be... We uh, can clear those out. The first one is item 314, Jakarta Road. Okay, is Eddie Perez uh, here? Uh, he probably isn't and this was an error on our part where we did not mail the notice. Okay. So it's been scheduled for August 13th. Okay, so we need a motion to defer that to August the 13th. I'll uh, move to defer that to August 13th. Um, do we have to give notice for that, I guess? We have already. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Seconded by Mr. Taylor. All in favor? Mishi just... Uh, okay, so we're going to mark Mishi. Mark. Oh, she's back. She's back. <laughs> okay. All in favor? All in favor? Okay, number three, uh, the 14 Jokan Kata is deferred till August 13th. Uh, next application, I believe, is item number eight, 38. So you know, that's the one that uh, I have a Bar, conflict. You have a conflict. Yep. So we get to hear from Phil Carvalino. Okay, the applicant here on this one, this is uh, well, actually, this is when we had a lot of people scheduled to speak. 38 Uno Drive, Rahel Hosseini. Okay, we also have just, uh, just hang on, Mr. Hosseini. Uh, we have also other speakers registered, the neighbor from thir at 36, the neighbor from 40, and the neighbor from 35 Uno. Uh, Melissa Lesnar, Michelle Leclerc, and Marilyn DeSuma. Uh, Phil, are they are these the neighbors aware that this matter uh, there's a request for deferral? I think this is a request by the agent. So let's, I guess, hear from the agent uh, as to the reasons you're asking for a deferral in this application. I know we have a lot of opposition. This is for a new detached dwelling with an attached garage with three variances. Mr. Hosseini. Mr. Hosseini. It's actually Kyle Kadra. Oh, Kyle Kadra, okay. We have a pinch hitter. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, Michael. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, neighbors yeah. are unaware of the deferral request. Oh, the neighbors, but they are now. They've just, uh, have yeah. they been listening to this? So the agent is asking for a deferral. This is not like the last one, if you were listening, where there has to be a deferral because there was, the notice wasn't sent properly. So the agent is requesting a deferral of this application. So, you know, uh, let's hear uh, the reasons for the deferral request. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The reason we're asking for a deferral tiny die is to address the concerns of the neighbors and uh, uh, probably revise the layout to make sure everyone is satisfied. Okay, so you've seen that there's a lot of opposition on this application, so you're, uh, you're wishing to uh, defer sine die, which I guess means when you're ready, you'll put it back on an agenda. But this is to for to con consult with the neighbors or as well, or to just make changes. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so there'll be a revised yeah. notice, and perhaps I don't know if it's beneficial if you'd like to, uh, or if you already do have the contact information for the three neighbors who were involved, as well as perhaps some other neighbors. We do have those, Mr. Chair. Okay, so the, your request is to defer in order to make changes in light of the uh, all, all the opposition to your application. 
Uh, can we hear from uh, the neighbors on the issue of the deferral? We're not talking about the merits now, but just on the issue of whether you're in favor of or opposed to this item being deferred as requested by the app, by the agent. So can we hear first from uh, Melissa Lesnar? Melissa? There, there is no Melissa. Oh, there is no Sorry. Melissa. Okay, how about Michelle Leclerc? Michelle, Le Michelle Leclerc? To us what their changes are gonna be. Is that Michelle? Yes. Hi, Michelle. So have you heard the applicant is wishing to defer and not have the application heard today in order to make changes, hopefully uh, changes that are more uh, acceptable to the neighbors who obviously have concerns. He has received the uh, correspondence and so he wishes to defer in order to make changes. Are you okay yes, with that? Yes, that's fine. That's fine? Yes, okay. I'm okay with that. Okay, and perhaps you can, uh, I assume he has an e, I see your email address, so he can obviously contact you, I don't know if you, what other information, to inform you of the changes, perhaps get some consultation with the neighbors. Okay, um, also Marilyn DeSuma from 35. Hello. Hello. Yes. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Hello. Marilyn, are you yes. in favor of the deferral request from the applicant? Uh, I'm okay as long as I uh, remain informed regarding the changes that uh, may or may not happen. I'd like to stay informed and stay in contact or the agent at least be in contact with uh, me and the other neighbors. Yeah, I've suggested that and he's listened to that. He's on the line and I believe he, I don't know, I believe he has your, does he have your email address, your phone number and uh, as well when this matter is eventually put back on an agenda, there will be again uh, notice going out to the uh, to the neighbors within, okay. the, within the vicinity. Uh, so you will okay, be formally so notified agent, anyway. Okay, so I know that the I can leave here uh, knowing that the agent has my email address, at least. I assume. Mr. Hosseini, oh no, it's not, it's the other speaker. Do you have the neighbor's uh, way of contacting the neighbors, sir? Mr. Chair, if, if you, the neighbors had uh, indicated their email address on the letters, then yes. we would be Yes, okay, so you would have that and also your client, their, their neighbors, yes. your client could obviously contact them. Okay, very good. Exactly. Okay, so we have um, a request for deferral. Uh, the neighbors at 40 and 35 are not opposed to that. We have not, we don't have uh, anything from the neighbor 36. It doesn't appear to be on the line. So uh, members, can I have a motion to defer this application? For the purpose Mr. Chair, I'll move deferral to enable a consultation with the neighbors with the possibility of making changes. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Mishi uh, McCloskey, I see you had your hand up to bring the same motion, so sure. we'll second that. Okay, all in sure. favor? Okay, the, uh, the uh, application is deferred, sign die. So when you're ready to put it back on an agenda, please contact staff. Thank you, applicant. Thank you, neighbors. Hi, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, sorry, uh, for deferrals, we will not be rescheduling until October at the earliest. Okay, if, if so they that's can a good just thing be for aware everyone of that. to know that, um, for the applicant to know that in the event of rescheduling, uh, the earliest, depending on when you advise staff, would be October. So even if you contacted staff tomorrow and told them you've made your changes, you wouldn't be back on an agenda until October. No, it didn't. Okay, okay thank you. So that matter has been deferred. Okay, uh, we also have item number 10. This is a request for deferral due to a missing variance, I believe, uh, 18 Kent Royal Drive. And the only person we have registered with is the uh, agent Tatjana Pajavic from Synth uh, Synthesis Homes. Tatjana, are you with us? Yes, I am. Good morning, Mr. Chairman Good morning. and the members of the committee. Uh, so, um, staff, this matter is, uh, there's a uh, variance missing. Why is this matter have to be, why is this matter being deferred? Uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, it seems that uh, the, in the initial zoning not notice that we received, the examiner was accidentally omitted one of the variances and it was uh, floor space index. In the updated notice which we received, and it was on July the 13th, uh, it was emailed to us and we uh, forwarded it that the same day to the application technician. In a frequent communication with the technician, it appeared that the public notice was already mailed at that time and there was no sufficient time for uh, issuance of a revised public nice. notice. So in this situation, we were, <laughs> we were 
uh, we wanted to request for the kernel of our file and we hope also that uh, uh, the fee for the next available uh, yeah, you'll have to speak to staff that. about that. We can't we'll discuss that okay. during the hearing. But uh, so there was so this, and I see there's no one else appearing on this. So hopefully your your uh, application will go smoothly once you get it back on. There's no opposition, and I believe planning is just asking for a, a condition of approval to be tied to be built substantially in accordance. Uh, yes, as you've mm -hmm. seen. So, and urban forestry has conditions as well. Okay, so this matter has to be deferred. Um, and is this again one that won't be back on until October, Madam Chair? Uh, probably uh, not, based on the number of files we're still waiting to schedule. Okay. Okay. So we need a uh, motion to defer. I'll move for deferral. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Seconded for the motion. Mr. Uh, Mishi, McCloskey, all in favor? Okay, the matter is being deferred. We'll, uh, we'll see you here again. And the next file is item 17, 63 Glen Aiden Avenue East. Okay, that's the last um, matter on the morning agenda. Yes, there were errors in the notice. Um, so we've rescheduled it for August 13th. And in case any people are participating or watching through YouTube, the applicant has not made any changes. It was just variances missed on the part of our office. The proposal remains the same. Okay. Yeah, because we know I have no one else registered to speak on this uh, application. So um, a motion to defer to the specific date to August 13th. Okay. I'll uh, move to defer. Thank you, Ms. McCloskey. Seconded by Mr. Palmer. All in favor? Okay, the matter is deferred. Okay, so we've dealt with uh, cleared a couple of items from the agenda and cleared up some of the phone lines. Uh, so we are ready to start the first application, which is 2161 Lakeshore Boulevard West. And we only have one speaker, uh, Craig Hunter. Yes. Good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. Let's just bear with me for a second. Just getting my computer open here. Okay, so this is an application to modify development standards for site-specific by zoning bylaw 572-2016. So that was obviously from 2016. And um, this is to revise the site-specific zoning bylaw that was, it looks like, from four years ago. Uh, we have planning requesting, I believe, a condition of approval. Anyway, Mr. Hunter, why don't you uh, walk us through the application and let us know what happened here. Thank you, Chair. Uh, members of the committee, thanks for having me. My first virtual hearing, which is uh, <laughs> great. Um, very briefly, um, this application was first filed in November of 2019. Uh, we uh, continued to review it with uh, community planning and uh, in the early winter, uh, they suggested that they'd like to, uh, Madam E, to enter into a affordable housing arrangement uh, with the city. Uh, they then had a series of correspondence uh, with the city housing secretariat together with uh, Habitat for Humanity and have come to an agreement to secure up to three affordable housing units, uh, which represents a capital contribution in the range of about a million dollars uh, to help subsidize the down payments on three, up to three units in this building. Uh, notice was given uh, at the time for uh, March, uh, unfortunately given COVID, uh, it, was, it was then suspended. Uh, we have come back uh, now for our hearing, thankfully, and uh, there are seven variances overall. I provided a very brief uh, five page um, uh, visual exhibit uh, to committee, which generally explains where they are. Essentially, there are variances um, triggered uh, in terms of density, both residential total and overall floor space index. There's three variances, one to three. There's a unit increase of 18 suites um, above the 660 permitted. And there are variances three, five through seven that relate to building height. Now, uh, there are, uh, there's two towers. One is uh, called Vita one and the other one's Vita two. They're under construction. And there's a proposal to, to insert two floors into the uh, 53rd and 54th floors 
So that tower would rise to 56 stories overall. Um, the, there's a conversion of some mezzanine space in the base of that area for two units. And then on the uh, lower tower, uh, the mechanical penthouse is not fully needed. So uh, part of it will remain and part was repurposed for residential suites, all within the same approved heights. Again, as you noted, uh, support from community planning with the condition to secure the affordable housing, uh, support from the city housing secretariat, support from transportation services, which is reviewed, no issues from forestry. And then outside, our client has engaged with the Humber Bay Shores Community Association, which supports the application, the overall umbrella condominium corporation for Humber Bay. And uh, there's a letter of support from Habitat for Humanity. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions and we would respectfully request your support. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hunter. So just to take it, the three conditions being proposed by community planning are acceptable to your client? Yes, sir. Okay, and I see that uh, otherwise transportation has no objection. Housing Secretariat is uh, talk, talk, this waiver and undertaking. So, um, okay, any other any questions for Mr. Hunter or are we ready for a motion? Mr. Chair, I find the application meets the four tests under the Planning Act, and um, I'm, I'm pleased to note that it includes a much needed affordable housing component. And I am prepared to move for approval subject to the planning department condition. Thank you, motion by Don Taylor. Need a seconder for that motion. I'll second that. Okay, thank you, Ms. McCluskey, all in favor? Okay, you have unanimous approval, Mr. Hunter. Thanks so much. Thank you Best of luck, and we'll see day. you again for your uh, so your your first virtual hearing as uh, your one and zero. Oh. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Uh, our next application is item number two, eighteen Charleston Road. Uh, we have one speaker uh, registered, being the owners. Katika uh, and Leonardo Grabak. And this is an application. Let's see. Computer closed up again. That's anyway, it's for a detached uh, dwelling with an attached garage or four variances. And there's a condition of approval from transportation. And as well, urban forestry is requesting that condition number one. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. Good morning, sir. Um, so my, go ahead. Yeah, straightforward application. Um, I don't know if the committee members want a presentation or is that not necessary? Okay, and perhaps. I've got a question. But... Yep. Question from Mr. Taylor. Yes, so uh, can I ask, uh, this is with respect to the transportation department condition. Are you okay with reducing the driveway width to 4.06 meters? Variance four? Yeah, so it, it's interesting because that memo was dated May the 27th, but we only received it on July the 24th. Huh. And the actual memo has a couple of errors in it. So they identified the existing dwelling as a two-story dwelling, which it isn't. And then in the fourth paragraph, they actually, uh, whoever wrote it, wrote down that the bylaw allowed a maximum driveway width of 4.39, which is must be a typo. Uh, but in any event, we did respond to the uh, to the Department of uh, Planning and Review, and we did submit a revision. But that was again was done on Monday. Haven't heard back from them. Um, we are okay with with that, and the new revised plan does show that. Um, in fact, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to share it with you. No. So any revised material no. that wasn't submitted prior to the deadline isn't before the committee, but we understand that you've submitted drawings to reflect these conditions. So the committee could impose these conditions. You've already prepared the drawings, but the reduction in driveway width is only referred to within the municipal boulevard. So they just right. want to and, make sure that that's done on the city property, not necessarily on yours. Yeah, and, and we're okay with that. Okay. And in fact, the new plans do reflect that change, as well as the notation that they asked for. Uh, 
you're saying the memo, this memo that we have as well, dated May, uh, you actually just received. Yep, just on July the 24th. Uh -huh. How did you receive that? By mail or email? Uh, by email. Email, okay. Okay. Any, so it was uh, a little bit confusing. Yeah. Sorry, I was just so say, notwithstanding, really you're saying the errors they made in the letter, every, the recommendation is correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Any further questions for the, uh, for the owner, the applicant? And are we ready for a motion? Well, there are urban forestry conditions. Mr. Chair, I find the application meets the floor test under the Planning Act, and I would uh, move that uh, it be approved subject to urban forestry condition one and uh, the conditions of the Transportation Department. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. All in favor? You have unanimous approval. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, gentlemen and, and, ma and ma'am. Yes. Okay, so the next application is item number four because item number three has been deferred. Eight, uh, 84 29th Street. And this is an application. Hello? Yes, this is an application. We have uh, four registered speakers the agent, Nick Ennis. A uh, couple, and then uh, the neighbor at 86 next door, Valerie Molnar, and as well as two representatives, uh, or perhaps three, from the uh, Long Branch Neighborhood Association, Judy Gibson and Ron Jameson. So this is to construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. Um, there are two variances. Uh, we have the Long Branch checklist. There is opposition. And... Um, Note among the two variances, there's a request to increase the uh, floor space index 0.335 permitted to 0.66, and the other variance is a side yard setback on the north and, and uh, south sides. Um, good morning. Mr. Anus, Nick Anus. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, could, I, you, <coughs> could you give us Anus, thank you. I think we'd like a, we have, you know, a copy of uh, your submissions, covering letters, supporting materials, as well as opposition letters. Uh, could you give us a brief presentation of your application and uh, let us know why it's uh, worthy of uh, support? Sure. Uh, I'd like to say that, uh, you know, we uh, were in the design. It's a challenging site because it is a small lot and, uh, you know, we have some constraints that we're dealing with. So we tried to minimize the number of variances. We probably had yeah. uh, six or seven variances to begin yeah. with. Uh, we were able to reduce those to two. I think that was, uh, you know, a good sign on our part. Uh, the size of the house is a reasonable size, just over 2,000 square feet. Uh, we are applying for what we feel are reasonable variances and minor in, that are minor in nature. Uh, the current setbacks, uh, side yard setback, it represents an as-built condition for the existing house, and therefore we feel we're not really changing anything significantly on that side yard setback. And I'd like to point out there are numerous examples of previous approvals on the street and this area uh, where they are improving housing stock in this particular neighborhood and uh, you know providing jobs to the local area. So you know we could cite examples on uh, the same street at 78, 76, 74, and 70, 29th Street. Um, we did uh, we did see the letter from Parks, and we were able to speak to Max. Sir, Edie sir, can I just interrupt for a second? While you said there, you said sure. you have other other draw other dwellings where they've I guess new dwellings have been built. But I guess we're going to hear probably yeah. from the neighbors and from the uh, uh, neighborhood association. The I assume the floor space index. I know it's only two variances, but this one is from 0.35 to 0.66. It's almost double, and I assume that's what they're going to be focusing on. So, are those other builds also similarly at 0.66, or are you saying because they had other variances and height and and other front yards? I, 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 I believe so, and uh, you know it's almost impossible to build anything. Uh, you know, 2,000 square feet is not an unreasonable request. It's not a huge, uh, you know, a huge uh, um, size for a house uh, of this nature. So, 
we believe it's very reasonable and fair. Uh, we have, you know, basically essentially a, a reasonable floor plan. Mm -hmm. It's a very tight, tight house as it's designed. Uh, but the old house is very, you know, it's an eyesore. It's, uh, it can't be uh, reused or re readapted for its purposes because right. it's just simply right. not structurally compatible to do so. Okay. So, uh, okay. But uh, we definitely think that these reason, these variances we're asking for are, are, are minor in nature. Okay. Now, I, I would like to okay. speak to a couple of these objections, if I may. Uh, well, if, maybe if what you a, should do is wait for them to make their presentation and then you can respond. But if you'd like to just, like, I think the main thing to focus in advance, because we're going to hear is, is the point six seven or six six seven or six six point six six. my mistake, is that reasonable and is that uh in line with what other people on the street have have done and have received as uh, for variances so if you'd like to you know uh do that in advance you're i don't know you have five minutes i don't know where you are in your five minutes but you'll have a chance to respond to the uh presentations and concerns raised well, by the I'm, neighbors i'm like like i said we are not designing anything that's uh you know over the top or uh, you know we have simple bedrooms that are on the second floor we have, uh, you know, a floor plan for the main floor. It's consists of like just basically a kitchen open to a great room uh, and a small powder room and foyer. So I don't see, you know, how do you design a house uh, in this day and age without those types of spaces? Like yeah. they're reasonable spaces and we're not desi over designing. I would say if there was, uh, if we were over designing, then I would say, yes, everybody has a point here. Yep. But we're putting adequate and reasonable size rooms on every floor. Yeah. Okay. And you don't have a height variance. Uh, no. Nope. You have only the two variances, the side yards and then the FSI. Okay. So let's yep. hear from uh, the neighbors, sir, and you'll have a chance to respond. So please uh, remain listening. Uh, Jim, phone. Okay. Yeah, looking, bedroom sizes look reasonable and modest. I'm just looking there. Okay. So who are speakers? We have... Um, we're going to hear from Valer Valeria Molnar from 8629th Street, right next door. Good morning. Valeria? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I assume oh, you've been listening to the agent's first. presentation, so now we'd like to hear your comments and your concerns with what's proposed here. All right. Well, thank you very much for uh, letting us be included. Um, this is my first uh, meeting, so forgive me if I bring up something that perhaps isn't supposed to be brought up. Um, so pretty much, uh, we are literally right next door to the new build. Yeah. Um, and right down the street at 69, 29th Street, they just demolished the house, so and right at the end of that street is Elder, and they have just built, um, or they're still in the process of building townhouse complexes. So right now we have quite a bit of traffic with those builds already. So I just wanted to bring that up, and I was hoping that maybe something could be done with uh, not adding too much extra strain to the neighborhood. Yeah, ma'am, ma'am. Like I said at the if you, my opening remarks, we deal with planning issues. I realize we realize with construction, there's issues with even issues of potential foundation and noise and dirt. Right. And just and I know from going site visits, you know, some streets and some neighborhoods, there's you know, there's uh, constant Helpful. constant construction yeah. going on. There was one a number gentleman said came and said he had no problems with the application but there were 11 houses being under construction on the street so that's not something yeah. you know if there's issues with that you can contact 311 and, and the building department but we deal with issues dealing with the eventual built form and how that impacts you okay. going forward in terms of planning issues the issue of what's what so, he's what's proposed to be built there and how what the impact of that is once built we realize there's lots okay. of you know issues with the construction process, but we don't deal with those issues. Mm -hmm. We deal with your consideration and your opinion on on what is proposed to be built based on the plans that you've seen. And uh, I assume you you know you know the Long Branch people are involved with that as well. So can you just let us know? I guess the impact of the as built uh, on on your property and your enjoyment of your well, property. 
Uh, first and foremost, I work from home 100% of the time, especially now during uh, the yes. time of COVID. Uh, my current employer does not allow for people to work from the office. So um, my, I, I guess my biggest issue or concern is that I'm hoping that the basic necessities that I need to work will not be impeded upon. I mean, I need electricity, I need the telephone, and I need the internet and some basic, um, I was hoping perhaps if they could build a wall because my office space, actually that wall is on the side of their, their home. So that's where the major building is going to be done. Uh, so perhaps if they can build a wall to buffer out some of the noise and perhaps, uh, you know, to avoid some of the dust and debris. Oh, so again, we're talking during the construction process. Yeah. So the applicant is listening, perhaps, you know, depending on what happens, uh, you can, you can, you know, perhaps uh, set up a meeting to discuss the actual construction and hours of work and, and noise and any mitigating things that can be done to during the construction to perhaps assist you given the fact that you work from home on the telephone and computer, et cetera. Right. Okay. And I mean, but what about with it. what's proposed? <laughs> Sorry. Well, you know what, honestly, I wish them all the best of luck. I mean, I know that the current house that is there uh, is very, very old and, um, not very suitable for living. So based on what just my biggest concern is because we do share um, the driveway with them and they are uh, expanding the width of their, their property uh, or should I say their home. Um, our biggest concern is that they don't want to uh, divide or uh, the property line because that space well, the, is already the property small. line is the property small line. Enough. If you have r rights of way over each other for a mutual driveway, that will remain in place. Yeah. But the issue Perfect. is in terms of the built forum, you don't think the house is too big. It's not too close to your house, your property line. That's one of the variances. It's being brought a little bit closer than uh, the bylaw it requires. And the size, you have no problem with the size. There are a few homes in the neighborhood that have that same height. And with that height would reduce the amount of sunshine and whatnot coming into our home. But again, I understand they can't do much with the size that they have right now. Yeah, so and there is no height variance. I don't completely oppose it. It is a concern, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, thank you for those uh, comments. Um, okay, so let's hear now from... Um, they're going to be a speaker, one speaker from the Long Branch Neighborhood Association. I don't know who's with us on this. Um, it's Christine Mercado speaking. Um, it actually makes more sense for uh, Ron Jameson to actually speak first, if that's all right. How many speakers are you going to be? Uh, we just have two. Okay. Um, I'll be and you're going to be talking on different issues like last week on um, trees? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank yep. you. <laughs> okay. So we're going to hear from Ron first. Ron Jameson, or we're going to hear from uh, Christine? You're going to hear from Ron Jameson. Okay, welcome. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ron Jameson. I live at 1038 Street. I'm on the board of directors. Actually, before you get much farther, I'm having a lot of trouble hearing you. I'm going to try again. Uh, my name is Ron Jameson. Can you hear that? Yeah, a little better, yep. Um, our, our, as, you, as you pointed out, our primary concern is the FSI. Um, point six six, I think, is uh, inappropriate for the street. Probably would end up representing the, the densest house on the street, which uh, I think the second densest after this one is only point five one. So there's quite a dis a uh, discrepancy between what the applicant is proposing and what exists on the street. Yeah, Ron, so we're having it's trouble hearing you. prevailing character, it's not in keeping. Um, we're also concerned about the south side setback. Um, I don't think that just because the existing setback is 0.3. You're cutting out quite a bit, 
Can you mm. stay as close to your device as possible? Um, because we're not hearing okay. you very well. Okay. Um, I don't know if that will help. Um, Southside setback of 0.35 meters, I think, is, is too small. And just the fact that it exists now, I don't think is an adequate excuse for not addressing that during the construction of this particular home. Um, we do have the opportunity to uh, bring closer to being within compliance. I think the last point that we want to make is that when we look at the, at the site, there's a significant uh, I believe it's a red maple that's sitting uh, in the neighbor's yard, number 82. And do not see any sign of this in the plans that have been submitted. Um, we think that the tree in the neighbor's yard would be impacted by the construction, and yet it's not, uh, not addressed in the uh, way they've addressed the Long Branch Neighborhood Character Guidelines, nor in the plans that they've submitted. But those are basically the reasons why uh, we're opposed to this. Okay, Christine we, will expand on issues okay. related to the trees. Yeah, okay, we do have a memo from Forestry about conditions one, two, three, and five. So just if you were having a little trouble for me, Ron, in terms of the FSI, um, the applicant alluded, like you, you would probably have more stats than they would. Do you feel the 0.66 is excessive? And what would you feel is more appropriate for, for the property in a rebuild? Than 0.66. Uh, six, six. Uh, you uh, you feel it's too high? It's, but the the adjacent properties on either side are 0.45, and um, yeah. What about the new builds that have been done on the street that the applicant alluded to? I don't want to know about the ones neck. You know, the older stock. Uh, that's one issue. But he did mention some other new builds on the street. And again, he did mention that he only has, you know, he tried to cut down the variance, so he doesn't have height, he doesn't have, uh, you know, any other uh, performance standards other than uh, the FSI. So what would be appropriate if not 0.66? In your be, estimation. I'm sorry, what would be a more appropriate FSI? Yeah. You're saying 0.66 um, isn't appropriate, it's too high, so what would you feel is appropriate? About 0.45 to 0.5. Okay. Okay, thank you. So let's hear from... Uh, this is roughly Chris double what... Sorry, I didn't hear that. Um, which would be roughly the equivalent of adding a second floor to the existing building. Yeah, they're adding a second... Yeah, like, you know, so by adding a second floor, what would be the, you know, could you do 0.45? Could you do 0.5? Is that doable? I don't know. Could you tell I, us I what, maybe Christine can let us know, or she's, she's going to talk about trees. What are the other new builds at the, uh, what are the variances on the other builds on, on the street that I think the applicant alluded to, but he didn't give us the numbers? Or do I, I don't it? have data on that. Okay. Okay, so let's hear, thank you, Ron. Uh, let's hear from Christine then. Hopefully Christine will have a little better connectivity than you did. Christine? Hello. Christine Mercado. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Yes. Hi, good morning. Um, actually, the plan this morning was that I was going to be speaking on behalf of Judy Gibson. Um, and uh, if you want to give me a little bit extra time, I can probably elaborate on, uh, on 29th Street as well. Um, so I'm the chair of the Long Branch Neighborhood Association, and the LVNA um, supports the city forestry position in refusing this application on the basis of removal of city-owned trees, but also on the basis that the application is incomplete, um, where it's not documenting neighboring private trees on this property. So our letter was sent in on July 23rd. Um, did yep. that make it into the, uh, the file? We have two letters here. July 23rd. Right, July 23rd. So there would have been two. There would have been two from the LVNA. There would have been one from myself addressing a built form and another one addressing tree planting. There's one from Judy Gibson. Oh, fantastic. So if we can pull that up, I'll speak to that one. Yep. Okay. So our letter um, was sent in. And uh, so on March 26th, 
2018, um, City Council adopted PE 225.1 and its tree protection through committee of adjustment process. So when that was adopted, it listed what a complete, um, a complete tree application was. And it's supposed to include a completed tree de declaration form, up-to-date color photo photos, a site plan, uh, including the as-of-right build, and uh, tree details. So, um, and the trees in the tree protection zones identified on the plan. Um, also, as Ron alluded to, is that there are trees on the neighboring property. And from our experience, we know that this is very much an issue, especially on narrow lots in Long Branch. Um, so uh, I do think that it is unfair that those trees are not documented and impact is unknown when you're making this decision. Um, so can I just so, interrupt you and ask you a question? Is mm -hmm. that responsible? And I take it, you know, obviously on, on narrow lots, a tree on an adjacent lot is being affected by proposed new build. Um, we have a memo from this, this, do they require, is that up to staff, urban forestry, or is it up to the applicant to include those trees on their inventory uh, or on their presentation on trees? So how the, sorry, I'm talking over you. Um, so how the, uh, I'm just, you pull up the, um, the letter, um, on the, on the motion, it requires for a complete application going to city forestry. The problem with it is that it doesn't designate when that's supposed to happen. So there will be a there will be a tree declaration form, but it'll end up going to city forestry. It won't actually end up going to you. It's not being sucked into the, the committee of adjustment process properly. So and, and this is our complaint about process is that those tree that um, that tree declaration form we it's there, it's online, and it's routinely not in the application forms that, are, that come through Long Branch or any other, I don't know about other parts of the city, but um, there is supposed to be um, a declaration of, of impacted trees due to the build. And not just um, on your lot. If it impacts no, other trees no. not on your lot, it has to be included. Yeah, no, no, yeah. they're, they're, it's within six meters. That's, that's in yeah. the 813 bylaw. So, um, and, and that is so the city can consider rather consider all the impacts uh -huh. because without private trees, we'll never get to our canopy of 40%. Like you need private trees on private property because quite frankly, there isn't enough public space to actually get enough trees to get to that target. Um, and there are neighborhoods that will never get to that target okay, so, because of yep. green infrastructure, because of green so, uh, Christine, I, 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 if I agree with you and I looking at advisory comments, all tree bylaw protected trees on site within six meter of the site, 12 meters within the ravine, okay, blah, blah, blah. So you're saying that in, invariably urban forestry, even though that's a requirement, they only seem to deal with the trees on the subject property. Isn't that something you've got to take up with? We're dealing with this one application. We're not solving all the problems of the city here. If that's something uh -huh. that it's, that's happening regularly and exclusively and all the time, isn't that something you should be raising with urban forestry that they, they their comments uh we do have their comments here in their memo should not only include the trees on the lot it's like i under, i hear what um, you're saying that you're saying their application is incomplete because they haven't included uh the impact on the trees on adjacent lots right you're saying that right. happens all the time it happens all the time it okay. happens all the time so, and and this and it's not that we aren't we're, we're hammering away at the committee of adjustment. We're also um, talking, yeah. speaking to the councilor about it. And we're sure. also um, challenging urban forestry about it. But urban forestry challenges us and says, if you want to help complain about the process and the pro and what the, right. and what the, uh, the motion was, was for a complete, was for a complete committee of adjustment application. So when it comes to you, you need to get a full picture of the yes. forestry impact. Right. So, that, and so we're here to point out that this is not happening and this hasn't happened. And we, in our letter, we've actually shown you the trees and taken photos of the trees mm -hmm. that have not been properly documented. Yep, okay. okay. Okay, thank you for pointing that out. But like I said, I think you should perhaps be having a conversation on a uh, higher level or a more macro level than this particular one application that didn't seem to uh, indicate the tree. There, you know, the, for urban forestry does even on the trees on that they did consider is in favor of the denial of the application due to the fact that mm -hmm. it's going to affect a tree. But yes, you know. correct. And we're and we're here we're here to support that support that position.
but also to outline that it, it runs deeper than just city streets. There you're you're tailing off, Christine. Are, uh, there are. That's better. It's, and we're here to reinforce that it's not just city trees that are that are of a problem, which impacts the public realm. Yeah. But also, also private trees. Right. And we've also outlined further in the letter about all the all the OP policies that speak to healthy neighborhoods and yeah. preservation and respect of the environment. And like you said, it's not only just healthy or not only just private trees on the lot, but affected by the construction, even if on adjacent lots. So thank you for right. uh, letting us know that. Uh, you're past your five minutes, so um, let, I guess there's no other speakers. So we can go back to Mr. Uh, the applicant or the agent, rather, Nick Anus, to uh, respond to those Hi, comments, uh, both of Hello. the neighbor yes. uh, at 86, uh, dealing with construction issues. Perhaps you can give us some comfort in the minutes on the record uh, you know you're going to be sure. responsible uh, in terms of being built and also respond to the long branch comments yeah sure I and, and like, like i said if that. they said at the outset if you have any it's a statistics on the new builds on 29th street as to what they got in what all their variances were or if they had a height variance that you don't have and if they were at 0. 0.66 or 0. 0.62 or 0. 0.45 just let us know if you have any of that information to support your 0. 0.66 request i understand i unfortunately don't have those exact figures so i can't uh i can't Fair speak enough. to the exact figures but but i can show you know I've, I've i've kind of explained uh you know in those floor plans there's nothing significantly uh over design issues that we've done we've done we've done, designed a very modest home yeah. but um i'd like to uh you know speak to the neighbor first and then i'd like to speak to some of the other issues for the long run. Right? Okay, you don't speak to the neighbor, you speak to me, but you speak. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, I'd like to speak on, speak right. about. Okay, speak go ahead. On. So, so the, for the neighbor uh, uh, email or letter that was provided, we want to just say that we'll put a proper construction management plan together and we'll provide this to the neighbor in advance of construction. Uh, when we build our houses, we always have open communications and transparency with all the neighbors. It's a must. And we always work with our neighbors. We can't build our houses successfully without co the cooperation of the community. Uh, with the respect to access and particularly driveway access, they will always be maintained and property lines respected. We will not put anything, no fencing or any other built items will occur within that driveway or will affect their rights under their, uh, under their property rights. And we will be very cautious of any damages. We'll employ the, the best methods of construction to ensure there are no damages to the neighboring houses. And we don't anticipate any power or inter internet disruptions. These are self isolated uh, systems that will not impact the, the owner and they'll be able to uh, maintain their employment uh, work needs and stuff like that. And we'll always maintain courtesy and respect. Thank you. Um, let's let's the, deal with the issue because the Long Branch and the FSI issues. And I just point out, I'm looking at your plans. It's, you know, you have modest, it's a four bedroom, but you've got modest size bedrooms, modest, you know, it's not, uh, as you said, it doesn't appear to be over the top. That's right. Yeah, uh, provide, you know, on a, on a four bedroom home. <laughs> yeah, we just happen to have a smaller yeah. lot than many of the other people, but we're For just, sure. we're, okay, we're so can you, uh, that's reasonable. Yeah. Okay, so what about the issue about uh, trees and uh, the no, trees? No, we did speak to the trees, yes. We, we, uh, we actually spoke to Parks yesterday. We spoke to Max Dita. Uh, we explained our situation. Uh, we informed him on the constraints of the design and indicated that a removal of the tree would be likely. Uh, and he seemed to be open to removal and replanting. However, he indicated there is approval process for this. And we, indica and we indicated that we understand. It's not something like we want to remove trees or anything like that. That's not our objective. But unfortunately, sometimes uh, the design is, uh, uh, we are under uh, very, uh, very uh, strict uh, design constraints. Right. I mean, you're, you're... Um, but I do like to say, I would just like to say that, uh, um, you know, there, there, trees are being removed all over uh, the city. They're removed. Uh, in a development just down the street, they just basically demolished the whole uh, 
uh, property. That's r roughly at Lakeshore and 20, 29th Street. And you know, they, these are these are larger developments in the area, and it appears that developers uh, have the right to remove trees uh, and can work with people to do that. But you know, even regular homeowners who just want to build a house for their families. They uh, they are treated differently. I don't I, I don't believe they should be treated di differently. And uh, in this uh, in this in this regards, uh, we also are looking at employing measures to protect tree roots uh, with with um, ecological uh, paving materials so that it would we, we can reduce the impact. We'll make we'll be hiring an arborist to employ air spading techniques so that do not damage tree roots. So we're gonna be looking at a lot of these issues during the course of construction. We've done it many times before. We've dug near trees before, and we did it successfully and safely. And under the, um, you know, the, under the uh, review and um, inspections by, a, by an, a, a licensed arborist. So we're, uh, we're, we're, again, we're here to uh, address the variances that are brought up here today. Uh, we're we're doing the, our our best for our client and to ensure that uh, these variances get considered and uh, under the under the circumstances. Okay, so. thank you. So, and again, you're willing to work with urban forestry in terms of they require replacement trees, or but you're going to continue to work uh, with dealing with the trees in the best manner you can to save them or replace them. Yes. Okay. Uh, any further questions, either for the neighbors, uh, bring it into committee now for a decision, but if there's any follow-up questions for either the applicant or neighbors, uh, or any discussion, or uh, ready for a motion. Uh, question for the applicant. Um, the existing easement that's in place, you're maintaining that and will not be building into the easement. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Any further questions? Are we ready for a motion? Mr. Chair, I think this uh, application is uh, uh, sort of a good solution to a, uh, building a reasonably sized home by today's standards on, a, on an admittedly small lot. I'm impressed by the fact that there are very few variances required for this uh, project, and I find it to be in keeping with the four tests under the Planning Act. I recommend approval subject to urban forestry conditions two and three. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. The seconder of that motion. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? You have unanimous approval. Thank you, thank you, uh, neighbor, and thank you, Long Branch Association uh, representatives. Okay, we'll now move on to item number five. What thank you very second? much. You're welcome. So we're now hearing 47 Burnham Thorpe Park Boulevard. <laughs> Uh, it's an application of a two-story west side addition, which would include an extension to the existing garage. And on this application, we have um, two variances. Uh, there is support and opposition. Planning is requesting as a condition of approval uh, that it be built substantially in accordance with the site plan. And we have Councillor Grimes in support. Okay, and we have registered as speakers on this application. Uh, the agent owner, uh, agent uh, Giuseppe Scoleri, as well as we have the neighbor right next door at 49 Burnham Thorpe Park, Savish Farhanga and Sahar Rostami. Okay, so as the applicant here, Mr. Scoleri. Yes, my, my name is Giuseppe Scoleri. Okay. And so. I live at 47 Burnham Thorpe Park Boulevard. Okay, so I've just rep uh, introduced the application. We have comments from Ravines, the councillor. We have people in support and, and uh, opposition. Uh, and planning is requesting a condition of approval. Committee members, would you like a presentation from Mr. Scoleri or uh, would you like to just hear from the neighbor first? Okay, Mr. Scoleri, can you give us a brief uh, presentation, please? Yes, of course. Um, I live at 47 Burnethorpe Park Boulevard, and I'm asking for two 
minor variances that are tied together. Um, the proposed addition is an extension of an already existing side yard condition right. on an existing irregular shaped lot. I'm going to maintain the required 1.2 meter side yard at the front of the building, which is consistent within the neighborhood streetscape. And um, I'm going to maintain the integrity style and neighborhood feel as far as the way the extension will be constructed. And it's going to be done, of course, with all, all concern that anyone has as far as construction goes done by professionals and 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 going to adhere to everything that the city planning department recommends. Okay, I'm just looking to see. So I'm looking at the counselor's letter, sir. Mark Grimes. And it's interesting because I think it's very instructive to us because I it was a little bit of a strange the way that the, the variance is worded in terms of the aggregate side yards and the percentages. So the counselor does point out that the planning stack notes that the proposed west side yard setback does not apply to the entirety of the west side elevation and that the proposed west side increases from 0.17 to 1.2 meters towards the front of the proposed extension of the existing garage and partial second story. So that's why they're asking it to be tied to the plants. Okay, so that I think that that's um, that gives good indication of what you're doing here, and why it's worthy of support. Because I was a little confused by that variance, and that's why to keep yeah, to keep you honest, they're having it built in accordance with the site plan. So you couldn't mm -hmm. take that setback and, and extend it for the whole lot, but to make sure you do what's shown on your plans. Yes, sir. Okay, so let's hear from uh, your next door neighbor. Have you spoken to your neighbor? Have, has your neighbor been involved? Uh, uh, have you shown them their yes, plans sir, I, I, before I did, they got I the notice? What I was going to do and explain it to them. Yes. Sorry, I, I, I missed that. I showed them what I was going to do and explained what I was going to do a couple of times. Okay, yes. thank you. Okay, so let's hear from uh, the neighbor. I guess it's the do we have one speaker? We're going to have one speaker, correct? Yes. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes, very good. Loud and clear. Hello. Good morning, everyone. And uh, this is Sahara Sami. I'm sitting with my husband here, Savat Farhangi, and we are the immediate neighbors of the applicant and very much appreciate uh, you guys including us in this conversation. Okay. Um, one point of clarification before we move on. Um, there is no garage right now. Um, what our neighbor currently has is a shed that his car doesn't fit into. So I know the scope of this conversation is not foundations and we're not going to get into the technicality of it, yeah. but I just want to clarify that what's existing right now is not a garage. It's a shed that probably doesn't have any foundation or any of the things that you would put in if you were to build in a two story on top of it. Yeah. So I just want to make sure everyone um, looks at it that way. A um, couple of concerns. Um, there are two bylaws, and we would like to better understand um, how does a minor variant. Um, the first bylaw, um, I believe, it requires the site set back of 1.2 meters. Um, the shed that already exists is on our property line, but we are introducing a second pinch point um, if we are to go with the proposed design. Um, number two, the minimum required aggregate site setback is 20% of the lot fronted. What is being proposed here is 2.17%, which is 10 times less than yeah. Um, yeah. the bylaws, which are there to protect uh, old houses like ours. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that is the main concern here. Um, we do have other concerns. Um, you know, our, our home was built in the 1950s. There is obviously risks that we're concerned about um, that would relate to the um, any cracks, um, any leakage, anything that is going to happen to our foundation, which is not the... Um, yeah, like, uh, ma'am, as the, I told you, those are all legitimate concerns, but they're not our concerns here at committee. And I do have your letter here, and I see you're raising that. So you can perhaps discuss that with the building department, with the, con with the applicant, your neighbor, with his contractor when they start. 
and they were going to, like you heard in the application, the applicant said he's going to have a proper construction protocol and plan and discuss it with the neighbor. So what we're dealing here was with okay. the actual built form, which is the fact of the the side yard um, issue, which you say is 10 yes. times. But if you've heard the comments before that I was mentioning and discussing when the uh, applicant was presenting, they've asked it to be built substantially in accordance because the extreme amount of the setback does not run for the whole lot. So they wanted to right. keep it with the plan. So that is for your protection, that it's not going to be that entire thing. Um, we've seen that, you, and you right. see, as, as soon as you've seen the counselor's letter. Right. It is going to introduce the second pinch point, um, regardless of the fact that there is already something there. But let me move on. I, I do have a couple other concerns, and I sure. appreciate you clarifying sure. things for us as we go through them. Um, so putting that aside, I think um, one of the other areas that we are concerned about is um, the narrowing of the site space that we currently have. Any emergency works, um, even the other day, our neighbor rightfully brought a guy in to do the um, survey for the land. Um, the person who was doing the survey had to be in our backyard to do the survey. So any work that he is going to do, I can't imagine it is on the property line, how his construction team is going to perform it without being on our property all the time, because it, there's no room and um, the the. The, side, the downside of it, I guess, is that, you know, putting aside all the other issues of air circulation, lighting, I have a one-year-old daughter whose bedroom is right on the side that, that the neighbor is proposing to expand. There is going to be obviously a little bit of intrusion for our privacy. All of that put aside, in the future, if anything happens to our basement, if there is any emergencies in the backyard and we need to get construction group back there, we need to get equipment back there, there's simply going to be no way for us to do that. Um, so um, that's one of the other concerns. Also, I think there were a couple of other letters from our neighborhood, again, were the main parties affected here. And I don't have the data because this is not my application to get the, to get the data, but all of the houses on our street, um, most of them, if not all, um, they are very well spaced from each other. Our property is going to be, um, it's not only one, very few ones that that are going to be so close to our neighbor. This is going to affect, probably going to affect our uh, the property of our, uh, the value of our property. And there are two other constructions that are happening on the street right now. There's a renovation happening. All of them are following the bylaw by rules. So this is going to be a very unique situation for our property. And uh, we're just concerned that this is going to um, devalue our property on the street because we're the only ones in this unique situation. Um, the, the other concerns that are out there, aside from the financial aspects of it, um, if anything happens, again, we have, we're a young yeah, family. Ma'am, can, can, ma can, can you please wrap up because you're over five minutes? You've been going almost six minutes. Okay. Thank you. Like I said, a lot of okay, these con your concerns, you I, whether legitimate concerns or not, something we can consider in making our decision. So please wrap right. up. Yeah, no, just a thank you. Our neighbor, Joey, we, we have a good, great relationship. This is not personal, and I appreciate everyone hearing us out. Okay, thank you. Good relations are good between neighbors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. Um, Mr. Scaleri, would you like to respond to the uh, concerns raised by the neighbors? Uh, yes, the houses are close together on numerous locations on the street. I have, obviously you guys have seen the letters of support that are filed, I don't need to go through with those. Um, I understand the concern of construction, but I'm using professionals, carry on, bonded, workers and construction crews, and I'm going to adhere to the conditions of my permit and not do anything to impact our neighbor adversely. I see the neighbor at 45 is in support. The other side, the, the Francos yes. have sent in a letter of support. So that's an important letter of support. Uh, and people right across the street I see as well. So, you know, if you bring a letter of support from someone two blocks away, but it looks like, you know, you have the concern from the neighbor on one side, the neighbor on the other side, the neighbor right across the street. Uh, I don't see if there's someone in the back. Um, 
There's two neighbors across the yeah, street. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, we see the letters of support. So, and we know, we, we know that we don't really deal with the construction, and we appreciate you stating on the record that you're going to be, you know, responsible in that regard. Uh, so, if there isn't anything else, let's see. I think Mr. Palmer has a question for you. A uh, question for the applicant. Um, how do you do maintenance on the, is that the west side of the house with the 0.17 setback? How do you do maintenance on that? And if, if you're creating... Now, two points, you're going to have a dead zone in the middle that you can't access without going onto the neighbor's property. I, I just want to... Yeah, I do maintenance. I go through the garage. I currently still go through the garage. There's no gate there. Okay, how would you propose to do maintenance in the middle between the two pinch points without going onto the neighbor's property? It's only Because that's 0.17 is about six inches. I'm a skinny guy, I can't fit in there. So you're saying you have an entry, you have a garage door at the back of the garage leading to the rear yard, is that what you're saying? Yes, 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 of course. Yeah, and I have a, uh, I have a code, like an automatic lock, and if I'm not here, I give the code to the maintenance person and they open the garage and they go to my back there. Okay. That was how it was when I bought the house. So the member, we've shared the screen. I'm not sure if you're able to see it. On the site plan between the new portion of the addition and the rear portion of what's already there, how will you access that little sort of triangular space to maintain it is what the member is asking, I think. The way the way it's cur currently sits, there's no maintenance to be done there. There's no grass. There's nothing. I don't need to get there. And if I do, I just I walk there. I still have 0.17 meters. It's it's the same, right? Okay, that's the same answer. Okay, any other questions uh, either for the applicant or the neighbor, or are we ready for a motion on this application? And there is urban forestry condition number two and planning condition. Yeah, we have Mishis there. Yeah. I'm prepared to move a motion. I find the variance uh, not minor and not in keeping with the zoning bylaw. I move for refusal. Okay, we have a motion for refusal of the application, Mr. Palmer. Do we have a seconder for that motion? Seconded by Mr. Taylor. Okay, all in favor? I'm opposed, so I will uh, dissent. So the app motion carries uh, three to one. The application is refused. Thank you, neighbor. Thank you, applicant. And uh, we'll move on to the next application, item number six. Item number six is 38 Grovedale Avenue. This is an application to construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. There are five variances. And, uh, no, sorry, there, there's one variance, sorry. I was looking at urban forestry one and five, that's where I got confused. Urban forestry is looking for urban uh, condition one or for re refusal. And uh, there's reference to a transportation memo that I couldn't find, at least when I did my review. No, it was labeled incorrectly. Oh, okay. So there were two forestry comments, the previous one and the most current one. That's what I saw. Okay, so we're not missing anything. Uh, and registered to speak on this application, we only have the owner applicant, Antonio Leo of 38 Grovedale. Mr. Leo. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, there's only one variance on this. There's no one else registered to speak or in opposition. I've referred to the uh, forestry comments. Uh, is there anything you'd like to add? Or no, I don't think we need a presentation, but you'd like to let us know anything, then we'll see if committee members have any questions for you. No, I'm fine. It's I've had a okay, trees. Okay, so we have the urban forestry. 
You see, you've submitted pictures of the tree that clearly show that the tree has many unhealthy branches, repaired and willing to plant one or more trees to replace the tree at our expense. So that would be like Correct. condition number one on urban forestry. Okay, you've given us a picture of the tree. I'm not an arborist, but uh, let's see if committee members have any questions for you. Okay. And if not, if they're ready to make a motion on this application. Mr. Chair, I find the requested variance uh, to meet all four tests under the Planning Act, and I move approval subject to urban forestry condition number one. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Seconder for that motion. I will second. Um, We're having trouble hearing you, Mishi. Are you seconding? You're seconding that? You said something about number five or condition five? That condition five would be a, re a refusal or a denial of the application. So it's sort of an either or situation. So Mr. Taylor has uh, recommended condition number one. You second it? Okay. So seconded by Ms. Klesky. All in favor? You have unanimous with true approval, Mr. Leo. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we've finished eight, has been deferred. So item number nine, sorry, seven. Yeah, 231 Lakeshore. Uh, we have one speaker registered who didn't register, Terry Suomi. Hello, Mr. Chairman. Hello. The panel. Okay. This is an application for a one story west side addition. There are three variances and uh, TRCA has no objection to the application. Um, would, is there anything that you'd like to uh, add? Uh, Let's we'll see if committee members have any questions for you. Uh, no, I don't have anything to add. Okay. So it's just for a simple one story West Side edition and there's, we have uh, all these sort of uh, TRCA related variances here and they've indicated they're fine. So, committee members, are there any questions or are we ready for a motion based on the variances in the letter from TRCA? TRCA conditions? Or? I just saw they have no objection. I don't think they have any conditions. No conditions. No. Someone ready to uh, move a motion? Hi, Michael. Just wanted to confirm if you can hear me okay. Yeah, that's much better than on the last one. Will you prepare to make a motion okay, of I'll approval move. on this? I will move to approve. Um, consider the application minor in nature and meets the four tests. And uh, yes, motion. To okay, approve. motion by Mishi McCluskey, seconded by Mr. Taylor. All in favor? Unanimous approval, sir. Thank you. Your application has been approved. So we'll move over to the next application, item number 976, Cornelius Parkway. This is an application to maintain the detached garage in the rear yard, a previous Committee of Adjustment application, approved variances related to total floor area and of an ancillary structure in rear yard soft landscaping. So the maximum permitted lot coverage is 30%. Here, including the dwelling and the garage, we have 33%. That is the only variance. And I think we have a request for refund from the applicant. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the refund has been forwarded to Michael Mizzi, who's the secretary treasurer. He's just on vacation, so he'll deal with that once he returns. Okay. Is Mr. Rotundo with us? Yes, I am. Okay. Good morning. Uh, 
Good morning. So I've introduced the application. It's for uh, 3% for the uh, maintaining the detached garage. If you could just let us know how this came to pass. As the Secretary Treasurer has just um, advised, the request for a refund has been sent to Michael Mizzi, the uh, Secretary Treasurer of the Committee, for his consideration. Right. Um, okay, and we have your letter. You know, I, I, okay. I, I applied uh, back in February of uh, 2020, and uh, actually the planning, uh, planning uh, <laughs> missed this other variance, and that's why I had to reapply. Yep. Okay, so it's very straightforward. Let's see if committee members have any questions for you or if someone is ready to make a motion on this application. And urban forestry is requesting condition number one. I'm prepared to make a motion. I'll uh, move for approval, uh, meets the uh, four tests and is minor, um, subject to the uh, forestry condition number one. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Seconded by Ms. McCleslie. All in favor, unanimous approval. Thank you, sir. You have your, uh, Thank you. and you'll hear back in due course, I guess, from uh, Mr. Mizzy. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay, item 10 has been deferred, so we move over to item 11 which is 108 Mill Road. And this is an application to construct a second story addition above the existing dwelling. Uh, there are two variances, height and soffit height, slightly over. We have support and opposition. And uh, we don't have any communication from like planning or other city departments. Nothing from urban forestry. So we have two variances for height for the second story addition, no other variances. Um, and we have uh, registered as speakers here is uh, Zravko Savic, the, the applicant on file, and as well a neighbor from 97 Mill Road. So that's some distance away. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. I, I, don't, I don't have Mary on the line you don't have mary or rudy mary or rudy no okay they have not have they were they on the line and they've disappeared or no i never saw them okay and let me see we do have a letter from 110 these people are not from 110 Uh, we do have a letter from a concerned longtime resident who appears to be next door dealing with the sunlight, fruit trees, men structural dwarf both neighbors. So we have that particular that um, but we don't have anything from ninety seven. Here we, have, we, do have some, we do have support letters as well in this application. Okay. Neighbor 102. So the one neighbor we can't find from 97 who's somehow registered or their name appears here. We'll see if staff can contact him. In the meantime, Mr. Savick. Good morning, Mr. Chair, and uh, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So um, I see this is the second story, and you only have variances to uh, slightly over on height, and and then your soffit height. Am I correct that your actual height variance is only point? I was reviewing this last night. Point zero six of a meter. Yeah, point zero. Uh, yeah, point zero six of a meter. Okay, so six well, centimeters. That's pretty excessive. And then the soffit height is like half a meter. Anyway, yeah. So, one, well, so okay. I'm sorry to interrupt, but one of the one of the variances is by a Toronto, uh, Tr Toronto zoning uh, law, and the other one is Etobicoke. the Etobicoke. Oh yes. So that's half, I see so they're different bylaws. Yeah. So I, I, if the way I was informed, the uh, uh, Toronto bylaws zoning bylaw is active. Okay. In, in any event, uh, I'm going to hear from the other members here, but to me, it's uh, you can't get any more minor than that. You're building and a I'm second story. You're not triggering any other variances. 
Have you had a zoning review on this? There's no other variances for your second floor? No, there's no no other variances. So there's no existing... keep everything... Right, so the first floor, you know, the side yards complied. It's not like you're continuing going up where there was... There's just two variances for height and they're very minor. Exactly, uh, and, and we spoke to all the neighbors. They all showed support, and I think actually the neighbors from 97 wanted to show support uh, in person or, or live. I see. Oh, so they weren't call. necessarily in opposition. No. no, no, no. We have the support. We have the the letter of support from them as yeah. well. Okay. Very good. Well, I'm not sure about that, Mr. Chair, but um, we or, did reach out, and bo both are in the hospital. We're not quite sure for what, so they're not able to okay. participate today. We do have the letter from the next door neighbor. These people were quite, unless they were it's the other side of the street, unless there's some numbering issues, maybe they were closer to across the street, but the, the most directly affected neighbor uh, has written in with their concerns, so the committee has that before it. The neighbor at 110, I just summarized their issue about what their concerns were. It's just an email dated July 22nd. Okay, uh, so does anyone have any questions for the uh, Mr. Savick or are we ready for a motion? Again, these variances are uh, very, very minor. It says the bunk, you know, Michael, the name. Oh. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, no, can finish, uh, finish your No, no, I was finishing. I'm just saying that we do have the comments, but the variance is, is virtually, there is virtually no variance here. It's 0. 0.6 of a meter, 0. Yep. 0.6. And uh, with that, I move to approve, um, consider these very minor in nature. Thank you. Don't so, any conditions. Yeah, there's no condition. Seconded for that motion. Mr. Taylor, all in favor. Okay, the application is approved. Thank you, Mr. Savick. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. Okay, our next application is item number 12, 31 Loreen Drive. This is for a another detached dwelling with an attached garage. We have urban forestry requesting conditions two or a refusal or denial at number five. Um, we only have one registered uh, speaker, which is the owner of the property, Darren Sills. And uh, other than the urban forestry, there is no other conditions. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Mr. Sills? Yes. Okay, so we don't have any comments from staff. We see you have only two variances for your new build. The right. floor space index and the flanking street uh, vehicle access. Uh, That's right. We don't have any comments other than from forestry. Um, I don't believe we need a presentation. Let's see if committee members have any questions for you. Nope. Okay. Is there someone ready to, uh, unless there's anything you'd like to add, uh, let's see if committee members are ready to make a motion on this. I don't think I have anything to add. Um... Okay, thank you. Let's see. Any questions for the applicant? Mr. Chair, I find that the uh, application meets the four tests, and I move for approval subject to urban forestry condition number two. two. Thank you. I will second. Okay, she has a time delay, so we'll give it to her. Seconded by Ms. McCloskey, all in favor? Una another unanimous approval. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. And Mr. Chair, do you want to deal with 13 and 14 together? Uh, yes. Yep. 13 and 14 together, 95A, 95B Falstaff. This is, um, in this case, we had a previous Committee of Adjustment decision approved variances related to lot frontage, lot width, side yard setback, length, first floor height, exterior main wall height, and height. And now we're looking for length. Uh, and the front exterior wall height, oh, it's, it lists all the variances, including the ones that were approved, and now that you're looking for, for more. So I think on this application, 
um, which was again originally uh, these were undersized lots. There was, was a consent back in February, so not, it was wasn't a variance. It was a consent. You created two new lots. You got numerous variances. And now you're asking to increase those variances. And I understand it has not been built. So it's not like sometimes they come back and they, they ended up by error or some reason or the other. They've built more than they got approved and have to come back with the as built. But as I understand that this has not been built, you're just coming back because it's been three years since your approval in February 2017 to make further changes. And we have a... Uh, Opposition, and we also have a letter from Council Nunziata in, in opposition to this. The opposition is from 97 next door. Um, so I hope I've, I've uh, summarized ex what's going on here. Previously, you did get an approval in 2017. As far as I know, which you can correct me, it has not been built, and you're now asking for more, and the neighbor at 97 and the councillor are both opposed to this further request. Right. Am I so, right? Good morning, Mr. Chair. And we have on present on this application, we do have the agent, Ian Robertson, as well as the neighbor that I just referred to who wrote the letter, 97 Falstaff, Pat Tezzi present as well. So, sir, let's make, why don't you make us a, uh, make a presentation on this application. Let us know why you want changes from what you had approved. And I do understand it is, you know, three years ago, um, over three, three and a half years ago, this approval. So it is a little old, but please let us know why the committee should, given that you were given, you were given the, you, these rights, these lots were created when you got your severance and you got certain variances in relation. I think it's important that the, the members acknowledge and remember that this is a severance situation from three years ago. Okay, right. so sir, can uh, we can you give us a presentation, please? Yes, uh, can you guys hear me? Yep. Perfect. So uh, my name is Ian Robertson, and I'm the agent acting on behalf of the owners of the properties at 95 A and B uh, Falstaff. Um, just so for some context, this project is uh, myself and the client were not involved in the original application three years ago. Um, uh, we had no involvement actually recently purchased this property from uh, the previous uh, applicant um, uh, and they yeah, are builders. I see that there's a different uh, agent on the file I see that yeah. Uh, yeah. and so uh, at the time we obviously had no involvement in it but once the well, my current client looked at the drawings themselves um, there were a number of issues from a construction point of view um, uh, one of them being the garage ceiling height was uh, less than seven feet which is nearly impossible to get a garage door in let alone a car um, so we start off by that's that's the bulk of our changes um, by raising the house um, slightly overall. Um, uh, it affected the soffit height, building height, and midpoint from both old and new bylaw, um, uh, as well as how they're calculating the first floor height. Um, the overall house um, uh, change we're asking for um, 0.4 meters in overall building height, which is about 16 inches. Uh, in addition to what we had before. Um, and that was basically to, to facilitate the uh, garage ceiling height um, uh, to make that work. Um, that was the bulk of it, to be honest. Um, and, and so our, our feeling was, uh, although we are adding a little bit in height to the building, um, it actually makes for good construction practice and makes the house more um, functional uh, for, for the end user, as my clients aren't the end users in this particular project. Um, the, Secondary um, to that would be um, things like the, the, the wall height. Um, we actually changed and modified the elevation. Uh, the client wasn't happy with the previous elevation, nor was I. Um, I didn't think it was that aesthetically pleasing, uh, neither did my clients. And so we tried to change it up to try and get some better masking and proportions um, overall. So some of it was cosmetic um, from that point of view. And then the other part was, like I said, the garage ceiling height uh, as a necessity. We have actually shortened the building um, uh, from what the previous uh, application uh, requested, which was 57 feet in length, and we're down to 56 foot one. It's, it's negligible, but I also think that that reduction in length um, is as negligible there as the height increases um, from an overall massing and impact to the adjacent neighbors. Um, and uh, we believe the changes we made were for 
uh, better building practices um, and better livability and, and believe that they're actually minimal uh, impact to our neighbors. And that's why we came back to the committee. Um, my client's initial intention was just to build these as is, but they, they felt they couldn't uh, couldn't do that with, uh, with good practice. So that's mm -hmm. sort of why we're here today. Um, and we do believe that the added variances from the previous application that we weren't involved in um, uh, still meet the four tests of, of the Planning Act and, and the actual impact um, uh, from the previously approved application should, uh, uh, shouldn't really be a, an issue. Okay, so you're, you're saying that the first floor height, the changes since last approval is due to the increasing the height of the garage. I don't know if the what was proposed by the Goldberg Group, who's a very experienced uh, planning firm, was insufficient or they just want additional heights. Um, we have the letters. Did your client, uh, or did you discuss it with the neighbor at 97 to explain that the changes you were making were not to make the house any bigger, but merely to deal with the issues that you've just identified us? Did you have any discussions with your client? Because we're going to hear from them next. We hadn't heard uh, anything from the, the neighbor. We didn't, didn't have any discussions with them. <clears throat> um, I, we actually weren't aware that there was any objections. Um, okay, but what I'm my, saying is you got the approval three years ago. Your client has now hired yeah. you, and you're proposing something that's different. You're saying it's not much different and it's no more impact. But I'm just asking as a courtesy, did you or your client go speak to the neighbor before you filed this application to explain what you were doing and why you were doing it because they're they're writing in and they've gone to the counselor complaining you're you're seeking to big a much larger home. Right, we uh, we didn't speak to them because we were unaware there was any issues. Um, uh, because yeah. we were approved last time, uh, we we didn't do that courtesy. No. Okay. Uh, we didn't. Okay. I would I would you know as someone who's been doing this for over twenty years, I would recommend it's always a good advice, especially if you got your approval and haven't built, and let them know that you're coming back to rather than just having them receive right. something in the mail. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you, sir. Um, let's hear from the neighbor. You'll have a chance to respond. Mr. Tezzi. Yes. yes. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, Good I guess you've, morning. you've heard my introduction of the application. You've heard the comments from your client's agent. Uh, yes. We have your letter. We have the letter from the counselor. Uh, so yes. if you listen, he's saying that basically, okay, we don't deal with, with flooding and rainwater and the incremental amount. That's not something that we deal with. But in terms of the impact on you, um, I just said, so you understand he's, 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 the applicant is saying he's not building a much bigger house. He's just in, in, improving the uh, clear height in the garage. And that's why he's making these changes. All right. So but let us know what your even, concerns are. We do have your letter. Yeah. My only concern, and my, well, my number one concern is now where I used to have a big lot it would take in, act like a water sink uh, next to my house, will now be covered by two much larger homes, each with downspouts. And I'm hoping there's going to be some strategy to make those spouts carry the water away from our homes. Right. And Sir, I think what's before us in this application, this application was heard February 2017, where they got permission to split the lots to build what right. they had approved there. What's before us today is just this incremental amount. That's all we really can discuss. They already received right. permission to split the lots and build two separate dwellings and the right. variances they received. Now they're just seeking to make it a little bit higher and we've heard the reason. That's what I want to hear your comments on. Uh, the incremental amount, whatever, you know, whatever was approved three years ago was approved three and a half years ago. That's, that's what, where we are. We're just dealing with yeah. the the incremental change here today. So you well, can limit your comments to how that incremental change of being a foot higher impacts you. Yeah, like I said, uh, they didn't talk to me beforehand. I just got the letter in the mail and uh, I'm just worried because my side door is only two and a half inches from ground. And uh, I just hope during construction and even afterwards, there isn't gonna be any issues. Because now I come out my side door and I see this big tall wall where there used to be basically a nice lot. Uh -huh. and, okay. But again, the, you know, I'll let uh, Nunziata speak to the other issues on her concerns. But mine are strictly what's going to happen to the water management in that area. We have a lot of flooding 
even okay. as late as July 8th of this year, uh, not my home, but other homes in this area are getting flooded out. And the, and the word is all the time is there's too many concrete homes and not enough green space for the water to go. Yeah. And here we are right next door. Mm -hmm. We're doing exactly that. We're knocking down one small home and building two big homes and no consideration. I haven't heard anybody mention anything about water management yeah. over this last five years. Right. No, I agree. And as the city gets more built up and there's more hard surfaces and less greenery, there's obviously going to be water issues and we're getting crazier wetter with global warming. But what's before us here, sir, because this already got approved three and a half years ago, is just the incremental third of a meter in uh, first floor height and half a meter in overall height. That's all we're dealing with. That ship has sailed, no pun intended, uh, on the remaining, the fact that the lots were split and the two new houses are being built, that's not before us. What's only before us is this additional increment amount of height. I don't know if you appeared and were in opposition in February 2017 to these applications or you were involved or not, but that was done. Was basically, yeah, I, be, I brought it up at that time to a meeting like this one, yeah. um, and basically the water management issue wasn't even, wasn't even discussed. Uh, wasn't they said no we're, we're not talking about that yes so they went ahead and severed the property and then those guys promptly flipped it by making you know one, one property into two to another owner and here i am still waiting for something right. and they haven't happen. built anything yet correct no yeah no, that's okay. correct so that's why now because they haven't built anything in three and a half years they're coming back here and asking for a little additional height to accommodate the garage as we've heard in the presentation it's a new planner a new builder um, so let's see if committee members have any questions either for you or the applicant or if they're ready to make a motion. Yeah, so the councillor sometimes when, before COVID, she used to attend some of our meetings um, and speak on the ones that concerned uh, her constituents. But in this, she is just, she sent in this letter. <clears throat> uh, and again, it talks about Uh, yeah, the applicant before you now seek to build even larger homes on the two small severed lots. They're not really larger, they're just half a foot higher, at least from what I can see. It talks about the select area. The new dwellings will have a significantly larger footprint than the existing. Yes, this is the existing single home, but again, that and less opportunity for groundwater damage, but that was, again, something that was dealt with in 2017. We can't go back. We can't that is that is a, an existing situation. So I think the councillor's letter talks about, I guess, the issue that three and a half years ago when they were looking to sever the lot. So does anyone have any questions or is someone ready to make a motion? Or sorry, sorry. I didn't give, <laughs> I haven't given Mr. Robertson an opportunity to respond to Mr. Tezzi's comments. Mr. Tezzi, are you finished then with your comments? Just the water. Okay, so you've told us you know you what your concerns are. Let's hear back from Mr. Te uh, Mr. Uh, Robertson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so water concerns are always an issue with the smaller lots when you when you subdivide them. Uh, but there's two key things to to keep in mind. One being. Uh, we're at 19% coverage on these lots individually, and we could be upwards of 30%. So our footprint's actually smaller than what the, it would allow for by law. Um, uh, obviously, building length comes into play with that. Um, so we are smaller than what would be allowed, uh, whether it's one big lot or two small lots. Uh, coverage percentage doesn't change that, that number. Uh, but the second thing is, is when we go for building permit, we have to do a required grading plan and meet the, the town's requirements for drainage um, uh, taking it away from the house and uh, having zero impact to adjacent neighbors and lots. Um, so, uh, yes, there is a plan uh, in place, and, and once we go for building permit, it would be used uh, and get up and, and approved. Um, and so, the, the neighbor at 97 would have uh, no impact at the end of the day um, from water management from our properties. Okay, uh, Mr. Robertson, if you could. I have a suggestion. Uh, we just heard from the neighbor that, you know, even this was approved three and a half years ago, no one contacted him, you or your client. 
to discuss that you're coming back to add, make some small changes to explain that it's not to make a big, bigger house, but just to deal with the height in the garage. <clears throat> so going forward, I would just ask or suggest that it might be good practice as these things take place in the grading plan and all of those other, that you somehow include the neighbor, I don't know about the neighbor on the other side, but certain Mr. Tezzi has expressed uh, interest in this redevelopment uh, project and is gonna be living next door. So I would just suggest that it would be good practice for you to recommend to your client and to the contractor that they keep the neighbors on both sides involved with the construction process. Um, and perhaps if that sure was I done, can, uh, Mr. I'll, I'll... Tezzi wouldn't be here today uh, writing a letter of concern that is sort of not quite what you're intending on doing. That could have maybe been avoided, but just a suggestion. Appreciate oh. it and noted. Thank you. So does anyone have any follow-up questions for either uh, Mr. Robertson or Mr. Tezzi, or are we ready for a motion? Yeah, I got a question. Uh, Mr. Robertson, can I ask, are, are you aware that Urban Forestry have asked that uh, their condition number two be imposed? Are you aware of that? Uh, uh, what's condition number two? So I just condition I number two. Just an injury tree or? All of this was sent to you by email and you should be checking AIC to see what's in your file. Yep, I, I'm sorry, I have like a. Submission of a complete application anybody. for a permit to injure or remove a privately owned tree. That was probably the case yeah, three so and a half years ago too, right? So yeah. the same condition. So we've provided arborist. We've we've provided an arborist report, or completed an arborist report, um, and it was circulated to urban forestry, um, basically uh, addressing the the four trees of concern, uh, in, including the ones for injury or removal, um, uh, in replacement of so uh, providing replacements for those trees. Okay, but as recently as nine days ago, the urban forestry department requested the submission of a complete application, not an arborist report, a complete application for a permit to injure or remove a privately owned tree. So any approval today would be subject to that condition. Yes, I believe we've actually made that application as well since that condition was posted, yeah. So we would be okay with that condition of getting the approval Thank you. from them. Okay. Sorry, question for the applicant. Um, planning staff normally comment on applications. They haven't made any comments, but uh, uh, often when they do, they tie it to a certain site plan. So if uh, we deem approval for this, would you be okay if we uh, tied it to site plans? And the ones we have are dated uh, May 8th, 20. Would you be okay if uh, that was a condition? Yes, I would be. Okay, thank you. Okay, so remember we have two applications and we might as well make one and have it apply to both, Madam Secretary Treasurer. We have 13 and 14 for 95A and 95B, but we'll just ask for one motion, and deem it to be on both. All right, I'm prepared to uh, move a motion um, in the context of the explanation that the applicant gave uh, that these were tied to certain plans. I'm prepared to uh, move for approval. Uh, the variances requested are minor in nature and meet the four tests. So uh, they would be subject to um, them being tied to the site plans dated May um, 8th, I believe it is, and uh, subject to condition two for the forestry. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Ms. McCluskey, seconding that motion? Yes, I second, sorry. Okay, thank you. All in favor, you have unanimous approval. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, our next application, we have two more before we break for uh, till the afternoon. Item number 15 and 16. So item number 15 is 54 River Cove Drive. It's an application for a detached dwelling with an attached garage. Um, it's an odd shaped lot. We have six variances and we have number 56 right next door in support. 
We also have urban forestry looking for conditions number one and two. And uh, yeah, that's all we have. Uh, we have registered as a speaker on this Robert McCatchy agent. And yes, hi. You with us, sir? Yes, Good sir. morning. It's still morning for five minutes. Um, <laughs> sir, so it looks like you're building. It's a very strange lot, so perhaps that occasions all the variances. Can you just briefly tell us, uh, go through what your what the, per, you know, go through the application here and let us know why it's worthy of support. Sure. Um, this is a triangular shaped lawn, as yes. you see. Uh, the current owners in it um, have a house that is uninsulated. They've raised their family in it and they want to replace it with a two-story home that's in approximately the same place, same footprint as the existing home. Um, we're going to replace it with a, a project that is going to be passive house certified, which means it consumes a very small amount of energy, but the target is to be able to heat it with the hair dryer. Um, because of this and the extra insulation we're using, we have asked for a height variance of 0.3 meters uh, to accommodate the extra insulation. Um, our other variances, we did speak with the other neighbors in the area, uh, we have verbal uh, agreement with nine other neighbors. Okay. You have the other letter in front of you. Yep. We have two other letters that we didn't make the deadline, but could be available to you. Um, okay. Yeah, it's a very it's a very odd lot. Time. So I guess that's what's occasioning a lot of these variances. Like you say, your real variance is slight. <laughs> variance. So why don't we just let's see if committee members have any questions for you. Uh, you know, and you do have the sure. support of the adjacent neighbor, which is good. Okay. Committee members, any questions uh, for Mr. McCatchy, or uh, maybe is someone ready to make a motion on this application? And we have urban forestry one and two. Yes, Mr. Chair, this is certainly a challenging piece of property to deal with, but I'm satisfied the variances required to and requested to uh, accommodate the building are minor in nature and meet the other three tests under the Planning Act as well. And I move approval subject to urban forestry conditions one and two. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Someone prepared to... All recommend? seconded. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, sir. Your application you. is approved subject to the condition from forestry. Okay. So our thank you. So our last application of the morning session is item number 16, 1726 St. Clair. Sorry, that's where he lives. It's 30 Westchester. 30 Westchester. Okay. It sounds like we just had a fighter jet fly over the uh, Civic Center here. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so this is to construct um, West East Side Carport, one story East Side Edition, a new covered rear deck. Uh, there are only there are two variances coverage and the East Side Lot Line variance. And uh, we have planning. Uh, I think planning gave us was a report for information here. Oh no, so if they want a condition uh, substantially built in accordance with the site plan uh, on this, and as well as we have forestry comments. Okay, so Mr. Espinola, would you like to? Uh, Add anything or to see if committee members have any questions? Yes, very good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Yes. Uh, no, I don't have anything to add. Uh, you try talking a little closer to them. We're having trouble hearing you. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, well, I'm just saying that I don't have anything to add uh, to the application unless there's any questions that I can answer. Okay. So have you seen we have a letter of opposition from 
Christina yes. Swill. Yes. I don't this is say where she lives. Yes, I'm aware of that. Um, we're not aware of any accessory structure being a dwelling, uh, but if that is the case, it will be dealt with at the time of inspections. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not aware of, of that being a, a dwelling unit, but uh, like I said, if, if that's an issue, it will be dealt to with inspections. Okay, do we see where she lives? Oh, yeah, you asked for me to provide the address. A 32, so she's a 32. Okay. Uh, committee members, do you have any, any questions for uh, Mr. Espinola? Okay, so for these additions on the covered deck and the variances, um, the planning, is your, sir, you're aware of the planning conditions. You don't have any objection that the, if in the event of approval, it'd be tied to the site plan to be built substantially in accordance? Yes, we have no objections to that, no. Okay. Okay. And committee members, Urban Forestry is requesting refusal of this application. On, based on its impact uh, on the city on trees. Deny all variances. Well, this is the matter has to go to city council that they will, yeah, so this is the process where they would have to go to council, right? Yeah, we have June the 8th memo and July 21st memo. Uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer, the process and the events where they're just asking for a refusal. I don't see them asking alternatively for variance one or two or, or sort of their conditions one or two. It says if despite the committee uh, approves the variances, they would say, no, they ask it be subject to the following condition, submission of a complete application for permit to injure a tree. So they do give us that either or in the, in the latest memo. Yeah, it's a 67 centimeter blue spruce. And I assume they'll require them to have a landscape plan and provide new plantings in the event that this tree has to be destroyed to accommodate the new the uh, what's proposed here. Okay, any further, any questions for the applicant? Sir, do you know if you're already over on the lot coverage? You're saying the dwelling in the shed equal 41.8, whereas 30 is required. Before construction, are you already over that 30%? Is yes, we're already over the 30%, yes. So would you know what you're at? So the increment of 41.8 is from what? Um, well, we have a deck presency at the back, which uh, I don't have the exact area for it. But uh, I would say that uh, uh, probably about 20 square meters over the uh, what's that right now? Well, you're seeking to go from 137.96 to 192. So you're saying you're already over 137.96. Okay. That's uh, any further questions for the agent or uh, someone ready to uh, make a motion on this? Mr. Chair, I find the variances to meet the four tests under the Planning Act, and I would recommend approval subject to urban and forestry condition two and the planning department condition. Thank you. Seconder for Mr. Taylor's motion. 
Mishima. Okay, all in favor? Unanimous approval, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Okay, uh, 17 has been uh, deferred. It will be heard August the 13th, so we're finished the morning session and stand adjourned until 1 p.m. All right, have a good lunch, guys.